Warning, despite the subject matter at the focus of these videos, my reviews are not intended for viewers under the age of 13. So if you're not of age, turn off the video now. Are they gone? Great, let's get to the intro already. Okay, no need to panic. So, Beast Morphers had one bad episode, and it just so happened to involve my favorite character. No big deal. I've been watching the show long enough to know that every Power Ranger season has one misstep every now and again. Sure, not every Power Ranger season has an episode that tanks a plot direction, but you never know. Maybe Beast Morphers had a lot of time to think over the hiatus and decided to change course with Steel. Maybe we'll still get that body swap episode with Nate I was hoping for, or maybe they did this to really focus on Nate and Steel's relationship going forward. Just, there's gotta be a reason, right? There's no way Beast Morphers would be so careless as to throw away a potential storyline, because if they did that, well then we're in the same boat as we were with Ninja Steel. I shudder at the thought of something like that, but I can't help myself sometimes. Still, I'm willing to hold out hope that this episode will introduce a new direction for Steel, or at the very least, keep the intrigue of the show going. This is Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Episode 10, Thrills and Drills. The episode opens with Evox talking to Scruzzle about how Blaze and Roxy keep failing him. Scruzzle mentions that he can upgrade the avatars with the Rangers' animal DNA, and all he needs to do is attach a data chip to a Robotron who will fight the Rangers. Evox calls Blaze and Roxy over to relay the information, but says the one who proves themselves as his top general will get the powers. Unfortunately for Blaze, Roxy already has a plan to get more facts, so she gets first crack at the Rangers, leaving Blaze to wish her good luck menacingly. Cut to the Riptide Gym, where all five Rangers are sparring with each other, and through the whole training session, Robbie keeps touching his cheek. Ben and Betty are also at the gym, with Betty on a treadmill, and this goes the predictable place, but points for the misdirection with a protein shake. Good stuff. The Rangers keep sparring until Nate thinks he's hurt Robbie, but the Blue Ranger just says he's got a toothache. The team wonders why Robbie just doesn't go to the dentist, but he says he's scared of the dentist thanks to good old fashioned childhood drama. Nate says he understands because he has arachnophobia, but Zoe very simply says that if Robbie has a toothache, he has to see a dentist. The Rangers are then informed by Commander Shaw that Roxy has been spotted in the city before we see the villainess somehow steal a drill from a construction worker without his noticing. Dude must be laser focused on his work. I can relate. Roxy quickly transforms the drill into a Robotron and attaches the data chip right before the Rangers arrive on the scene. Tronics are called soon after, so the Rangers decide it's Morphin time. Activate Beast Power! Ha! Yes, we finally got a full team morph. That was awesome. During the fight, Robbie's tooth nearly gets him killed, but Devin and Zoe make the save to finish off the Tronics. However, with the other Rangers busy, Nate and Steel are shot down by Roxy before she drills underground with the Robotron. The Rangers are unable to follow as the hole fills up behind the villains, and Robbie takes this as a sign that he should finally go to the dentist. Sadly, since the other Rangers are busy looking for Roxy, Robbie goes to his appointment with Ben and Betty, who take the Blue Ranger to their family dentist. Despite Ben's insistence that people People always leave their dentist with a smile, the three head for the hills when they see a shadow using a giant drill, only for it to be revealed as a handyman after they leave. Again. Solid joke. After Ravi bailed on his dentist, he checks with the other rangers, but they haven't had any luck locating Roxy. That is, until Nate remembers there are storm drains underneath the city, so he, Ravi, and Steel go to investigate. The three enter the dirty web field storm drains, which makes Nate uncomfortable because of the eight-legged creepy crawlers, but Steel assures him there are no octopuses in the drains. The trio eventually find Roxy and Drilltron, just as the villains stand underneath the Morvex tower, with the Avatar telling Scruzzle to distract the rangers with the Gigadrone 
before Drilltron begins drilling into the tower. Nate informs Commander Shaw of the situation, so she sends Devin and Zoe to the Giga Drone's teleportation coordinates in their Zords. Meanwhile, Ravi, Nate, and Steel get ready to attack, but before they can, Ravi sees a spider on Nate's shoulder. Nate faces his spear so he can remove the spider without alerting Roxy, but Ravi ends up doing that anyway by blasting at her before we get another morph involving Steel. Right on. During the ensuing fight, Ravi's left in a one-on-one -on -one against Drilltron and ends up using his gorilla strength, much to Roxy's joy. After Drilltron's knocked down, Ravi just leaves, so Roxy takes the data chip off Drilltron before the fighting continues. While that's going on, Devin and Zoe are still waiting for the Giga Drone, only to be fired upon since the Giga Drone's teleported underground. Back with Roxy, she orders Drilltron to drain a Morphex tower while she deals with the Rangers, but she's pretty shit at that job since Ravi immediately goes after. Drilltron. During his duel, Ravi's called by Devin, hoping to form the Megazord so they can defeat the Giga Drone, but Ravi's busy, so Devin and Zoe decide to hold their ground until he can get there. I would ask why they're not tasking Smash to pilot Ravi's Zord, but maybe they need an actual body for the Megazord sequence. Luckily, Red and Yellow don't have to wait long since Ravi takes care of Drilltron quickly and tells Nade he's headed to the others. <laughs> Nice job, brother! You read my mind! Hmm... Mind reading, you say? Interesting. Ravi, Zoe, and Devin form the Megazord so they can scrap the Giga Drone, and luckily for them, they were able to do it without damaging the street somehow. Nate and Steel also find success, since they defeat the Tronics right after Roxy teleports away. The Rangers reunite, with Ravi still having tooth pain, but he says that if Nate can face his fear, so can he. Cut to the Cyberverse, where Evox yells at Roxy for another failure, but the Avatar says she was able to get Ravi's gorilla strength. She tells Scruzzle to upgrade her now, since she's earned it, but Blaze comes in, saying they need all three beast powers before one of them gets upgraded. Blaze goes on to say that he has a plan, so Scruzzle gives him a data chip, and Evox adds that he'll decide which avatar to upgrade once they have all three beast powers. Back in the city, Ravi has a successful dentist appointment before meeting his friends outside, with Steel saying they wanted to make sure Ravi went through with it this time. Ravi says everything's better now, even though he doesn't have any bandages, but that's not important since Ravi thanks Nate for helping him face his fear. Ravi celebrates this by showing Nate a fake spider that the scientist instantly freaks out about, and the episode ends with Ravi apologizing until Nate reveals he was just messing with him. This episode is decent, and at this point, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong, I would have liked something with a little more meat to it, but this is a decent enough filler episode. In fact, this episode seems lighter than the rest of the episodes this season, partly because it's filled to the brim with comedy. So much so that I'm tempted to call this a straight-up comedy episode. You've got your typical Ben and Betty scenes, which to their credit are much funnier than last time, but you've also got the joke at the end of the episode that doesn't include Ben and Betty, plus nearly all of Steel's dialogue and mannerisms is played for comedy. However, the surprising thing is... It's all funny. I laughed consistently throughout this episode, and most of that is because of Steel, who continues to be my favorite character. Look at the way he shakes his head in disapproval after Zoe forgets he's half-human. That is undeniably gif-worthy. The rest of the comedy in the episode is also great too, and the important thing is they don't overcook it, and none of it is cringy or annoying. This could have been another last laugh situation, or most of the stuff Victor and Monty did in Ninja Steel, where everyone's overacting and overreacting. But everyone here stays in character, and it makes the comedy that much easier to buy in the more serious setting of Beast Morphers. The top-notch comedy also helps the moral of the episode feel less hokey, because again, these still feel like the same characters. My only critique on the message of facing your fears comes from Nate, primarily because I don't believe that he'd suddenly be okay with spiders just because he took one off himself without making a sound. Based on that scene in the drains, I thought he was just facing his fear rather than overcoming it completely. But I also see the other side where the point of the episode is to help kids be okay with dentists, and it's a lot easier to do that if you show characters facing their fears once and then everything's okay. The saving grace for this filler episode comes in the forms of the villains, who are definitely not filler because they shift the show into the next season plot. And I love everything they do here. Not only does collecting the rangers' beast powers give them something to do since they no longer need to capture steel, but it also provides a change in dynamic for these characters. Sure, Scruzzle's 
position in the general hierarchy doesn't change here, at least not yet. I say that because it's his plan and his data chips that are used all in the name of quote unquote upgrading Blaze and Roxy. Remember, he's a character who aspires to rule, and he's been butting heads with the avatars since the beginning, so there's the slightest possibility that this could be a trick to delete the avatars, or worse, mind control them. It's also possible that Scruzzle is lying about the upgrades and just wants to get Blaze and Roxy to turn on each other, which would make sense because this is new territory for the dastardly duo. Blaze has a look of betrayal when Roxy jumps at the chance to gain more power, and I can totally see his motivation shifting from destroying the rangers to besting Roxy at all costs, which could fracture their partnership going forward. On top of all the scheming and double crossing, there's also the possibility that gaining the rangers beast powers could have unintended side effects on the avatars. After all, the rangers have their own animal side effects to deal with that was brought up at great detail in the second episode. Personally, I don't see this happening because the rangers side effects were caused by exposure to the evox virus, so I don't think they would affect Blaze and Roxy because they were created by said virus. However, the avatars being exposed to the beast powers could cause those side effects to go into overdrive, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Side note, all this talk about beast powers made me question why Nate and Steel don't have their own abilities, but it makes sense if Steel's beast power was that he's half human, since he was exposed to Nate's DNA when he became a ranger. There's also the possibility that the two have telekinesis, thanks to that line from Steel in Battle. Admittedly, I could be reading into that too much, but it's fun to speculate on nonetheless. Overall, this is a fun episode. Beast Morphers somehow manages to get the best of both worlds by creating an entertaining and hilarious filler episode that also creates a new direction for the show to go in. It's a well-balanced episode that keeps all of its elements in check for maximum effectiveness, and for that, it earns a recommendation. I'm Nick, aka IronBet1993, and may the power protect you.